How to open in a Miata taillight. These are specifically the cheap eBay ones. Uh, they're fairly easy to open, but this same technique can work for the OEM ones as well. To get started, we're gonna talk about tools. First tool is some sort of foam mat to help protect the light just in case something happens. Next up is gonna be cling wrap to protect the lens. Let's set that there. Next up is flathead screwdrivers. So I like to use these little pocket screwdrivers because they're so thin and small that kind of gets you started. And then something a little bit bigger will help it speed up the process. Lastly, we have an oven. This one is just a really old crappy one that we moved into the shop, but it was one that was inside. So you can literally use uh, your kitchen oven to do this. If for some reason you do not have access to an oven, or you're not allowed to use the oven for lights. Uh, you can use a heat gun or a blow dryer. The only problem with that is, is that the heat isn't gonna be as consistent and it's gonna take a little bit longer. One more thing you're gonna need is some retro rubber. This is gonna be used to reseal the lens to the back housing on the taillight so that the lens doesn't fall off and so that water doesn't get in. So step one is gonna to be to preheat the oven. You do not want to put the light in while the oven is preheating. With those coils being glowing red, it's gonna melt this lens really, really quickly. I'd like to do 220 for about eight minutes. So now we're gonna set the taillight in the oven. What you see down there are some rubber cooking mats. You can find them at Walmart or Target. They are rated for some heat. These have been in there for years now. Still no issues. Eight minutes. Okay, yeah, that's eight minutes. Probably wear gloves. On the Miata taillights, there are a few different clips you're gonna wanna get. One, two, three, four. Uh, you're gonna wanna release those before you start prying this lens off, otherwise it will snap right down here most of the time. To do that, I take my really skinny flathead, go in between, kind of pry it back a little bit. Same thing on the other side. The bottom is released. Gotta release right here. I specifically go right next to this clip right here, this tab with one flathead. And then with the other one, I go right next to it and peel up. That's one tab released. And now I can do the other one. Just like that. And once you have all of them released, you can peel it off. Go ahead and cling wrap it. Once you've done your modifications, then you can start the process of putting the lens back on. We had gray butyl in there. You can see all the way around it was gray. So I've actually got some gray retro rubber that we're gonna put in here to just go ahead and match it. The border on this has to get painted black anyway. So uh, it's no big deal if this is gray. This is really thick. Go ahead and stretch it so that it fits into the trough better. And you're just gonna wanna fill up the trough with the butyl. You really don't want water to leak. Once you have your butyl set in place, uh, you can now get this thing prepped and ready for the lens to go on. Uh, what I like to do is use compressed air to clean out uh, any dust or any debris that I have just sitting in there that's gonna make it look bad. And the lens here. Quick tip for this specific lens setup. You can probably see right there. That is angled out like that on the end, and this is angled directly in. So I start here, I push this in first, because if you start here, this side won't go in place. This goes on the opposite side of the fin. So angled spot, just like this. Definitely start here, put some pressure on it. It's on there, but obviously not sitting all the way flush. Now we gotta go back in the oven. Definitely don't want that. Let's open this, take this, set it in there. Got that in there for about eight minutes at 220. Gonna need you a couple of these clips. This is gonna be used to hold the lens onto the back housing so that while the uh, adhesive is cooling off, the lens stays in place. That's eight minutes. In order to protect the lens from the clips, I use a microfibers. Add clips. Okay, the hardest part to get a clip on is 
right here by the fin, but as you can see, there's still a pretty decent sized gap. It is possible to get a clip on there. It's just a little difficult. So I have these, uh, these clamps right here. These are really useful for this. And all right, so now we're gonna let this cool off. And once it's completely cooled, then it will be completely sealed, watertight, and that lens is not going anywhere. Okay, bye.